Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo982 and today we are back from the brand new video. Today is a video we are here to discuss and react Rangers 2 Stranra Nil. Not the best game. They didn't leave me a lot to discuss in today's video, but before we get anywhere near that, as always, a quick shout out to the channel sponsors and the channel legends themselves, One Football. As always, the link will be down there in the description below if you want a little bit extra Rangers news. But let's get to this game of football then, shall we? Now, going into the game, I think I was like a lot of people who's probably clicking on today's video, they were expecting a cricket score. No disrespect to Strunner, you've looked at how they've played this season, the results against teams that's around them, they sit bottom of League One with a minus 23 goal difference. We all expected to take them, especially at Ibrox, but you've got to give full credit and full respect to Stran Ra. They came there, they did set out, set out a 10 man defence, right? But like in the League One, they're always going to do that, and they stuck to their task and they defended pretty well. And before we go any further on with today's video and talk about what went right and what went wrong with this individual game of football, I just wanted to give a wee bit of respect to the opposition. I was actually impressed with how tight the shape actually was. Now from the Rangers perspective I know there's going to be a lot of people clicking on today's video very disappointed in what they saw from Rangers and again there's going to be some people that just look at it from the underline and just say hell we won that is all that matters and again there's never any right or wrong opinions it's all about that discussion in the comments but where I'm sort of sitting is I was expecting a little bit more from Rangers I just felt like we were very very comfortable and very very passive in the middle of the park from left to right to left and right and that little one two little one two kind of just shuffle past to the side as if we were doing a shooting drill constantly at the edge of their box was driving me absolutely mental, gonna be honest. But where I come from circle is, I look at that as a 2-0 victory, a clean sheet with knee injuries and on to the next round of the cup. I'll take that all damn day. I'll take that all the way to the final and beyond as well, especially when you consider how bad we are after international breaks, after winter breaks. The track history is there. We're usually pretty damn poor, but... I did think we were going to go there and absolutely smash them. But unfortunately, the pumping didn't happen, but thankfully the victory did. So that is why I'm going to be sleeping tonight with a massive smile on my face. Another reason I'm going to be sleeping tonight with a smile on my face, by the way, has to be that performance from Nathan Patterson. Well done, son. Honestly, couldn't he be prouder of that young laddie? Obviously, he's a natural left back, but he's been trying out a right back over in Dubai. He played in there like 45 minutes in the friendly, and then he comes into this game knowing that Tavernier is injured, right? What's he playing in front of? Just shy of 40,000, maybe 39, 38,000. It looked like versus Stran Rand. Did he look nervous? Did he look cagey? Did he look like he just wanted to take a wee bit of time on the ball? Maybe be a wee bit hesitant and just grow into the game? Not. Nut and nut. That laddie honestly looked like an established player out there. And hell, I'm going to say it, he was the best player out there throughout the 90 minutes. I know Stephen Davis won the man of the match, but honestly, my man of the match has to be that right back because everything went through him the entire game from the first minute right to one of our late opportunities in the game. It all went through that young laddie and I was just so blown away thinking, Christ, that's his first start in the first team at an Ibrox like this, really? And speaking of Patterson, is the perfect transition into the game recap because the majority of our chances all came from the laddie, including the first one we're going to talk about, which was a wonderful cross. I think it was one touch, whip it right into the box. No messing about, no dilly-dallying on the ball. Touch the ball, kill it deed, and whip a dangerous ball in. And Jermaine Defoe was honestly that away for burying it. The next opportunity in the game of football actually was nearly a carbon copy of the first. Arfield gets the ball very, very quickly to Patterson's feet. He takes one touch and he whips another beautiful dipping ball into the box. And once again, Jermaine Defoe is that away for getting on the end of it. He genuinely should have had two assists within 30 minutes. The next chance in the game, we actually take a break away from Patterson. We flip over to the left-hand side who... I'm not want to be overly negative, right? It's the first game back, so I don't want to be overly negative, but I really, really was thinking that left-hand side was completely invisible. Halliday and Jordan Jones, it did not work at all. And I mean at all. It was so bad in the left-hand side. The chance that we're actually speaking about came from Ryan Jack drifting out to the left-hand side and sprinting in and doing a 1-2. And it ends up, I believe the goalkeeper got a save and knocked it on to the post. So unfortunately we were denied a Captain Ryan Jack goal, however if you think about it from this perspective it's probably a good thing it didn't happen because if I'd have witnessed a Captain Ryan Jack goal, I'd have went on that part streaking and no one wants to see that. That would have been ugly, especially with how chilly it was. 
But truly scarring jokes to one side, we continue to huff and puff from that moment from Ryan Jack right to the 44th, 44th minute of the game where we whipped in another dangerous corner. Pretty close a couple of times with the odd header here, it looked like it was going to go in. But anyway, this corner was whipped in, I believe it ricochets off George Edmondson and from there it falls to Scotty Arfield. He reacts first, he's on it on a flash and he hits it low and hard and that set us on our way. And when I'm thinking back to the game of football, from that second we scored to half time, which was only two and a half, maybe even three minutes, that was by far the best we played because it was sharp, it was quick, and it was getting in behind, it was hitting that long ball, and it was smelling blood and going after it, and you could see it was starting to grow, and you think to yourself, cool, we're going to hit two here before half time, but through a couple of very good saves and a couple of very good blocks and late interceptions from defenders, it goes to half time. Only 1-0 up. And at half time, I'm sure a lot of you guys were like me, thinking to yourself, right, we got through the ugly 45 minutes, we grabbed the goal through our very, very stubborn team. Now, we smelt blood towards the end. Now, let's go ahead and really turn the screw and let's blow this team away in the second half. And when the second half came, did it happen like that? No. But it was complete and utter ball domination and at some parts it just looked like a bit of a training match and us just practising in our transitions and our passing and our little passing triangles. That's honestly what it looked like for the majority of that second half from left to right constantly to young Patterson because it looked like we had identified him as our best player on the park which it was we went right mate go ahead and have your game and he pretty much did in the second half coming once again that I'm not kidding by the way go back and watch it. that again from grabbing an assist. But something does have to be said and that's within nine minutes of the second half we looked a lot more dangerous once Jordan Jones actually came off and I didn't want to say that but it was in this game of football he still looks a little bit rusty and he didn't look quite 100% at it in this game of football because as soon as he came on Barker came on and was sort of moved more or at least it looked like he was moved more in the middle of the park and the left hand side was just completely freed for Andy Halliday to go up and down and he made a couple of dangerous runs and a couple of dangerous crosses it wasn't a great left hand side it wasn't a BB level nowhere near it but it at least started to create Son. And it's probably quite fitting in the fact that our best moment playing football in that second half actually created the second goal by winning the penalty kick. We're passing it once again in and around the box. Everyone's getting a quick touch. It's nice play. And the one time it actually clicks because we've done that for the majority of the game, but the final pass was lacking. The final run was lacking. But this time, bang, 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 bang. It all clicked. A nice little ball into Jermaine Defoe. He's ready to ping it. He ends up getting clicked. It's a clear penalty kick. I'm pretty sure no one is complaining about that. And the man steps up and buries it to the bottom left after a cheeky little stutter. And after he gets his applause and gets his celebration, he walks off because he's subbed off for Ojo. Now, to be fair to Ojo, he did technically put the ball into the back of the net after a fantastic run and a great pass from Stephen Davis lifting over the defence. Ojo took a touch and buried it, but it was given for offside. Again, I've not seen that back yet, as of by the time I've got him and everything late at night, but it looked onside to me, so maybe Ojo was robbed. You can let me know down there in the comment section below if he was offside or not. But if I'm honest with you, after we took Jermaine Defoe off, and especially after we took Joe Arebo off, the game just sort of died and fizzled completely out. The only other thing that's worth mentioning from the game recap, by the way, is at the end of the game, or with a couple of minutes to go, Barker is in behind the defence. It's a fantastic weighted pass into him. He's charging into the goalkeeper, but I don't know if you, a lot of you were like me, but it did not look for one second to even thought about shooting it, and that's a problem because he's clearly playing with absolutely no confidence at all. He tried a couple of times to beat a man on the left hand side, was completely wiped out and completely just stopped in his tracks. He went in the middle of the park and tried a couple of things that didn't work and then late on the game when he's on right wing the ball gets right through to him and he just hits a slow sad pass in the middle with no conviction and it's easily cleared and I just think we've got a problem with the laddie. He just doesn't look like he's got any confidence. Maybe this is a BB situation where we just need to be patient and wait for that moment versus St Mirren that's going to give him the kick up the arse. But I just look at him and I just still didn't get it. But again, with that being said, everyone wasn't quite 100% at it. So maybe once again, we need to give Barker the benefit of the doubt because what did four people perform the night? I thought the two centre-halves were absolutely brilliant. I mean, the Stranraer striker had no chance. You had Katic beating him on the air and any time he, he spun to the other side and tried to get beyond Edmondson, Edmondson wiped the floor of him with his pace. I felt quite bad for the Stranraer centre-forward, if I'm honest with you. But I thought Patterson was a standout. I thought Stephen Davis was very tidy in the middle 
but the rest of them, the best way you put it is it looked like a game just after a winter break because that's exactly what it was and we got through it without an injury, with a clean sheet and on to the next round. I'll take it. And with that being said, it's time to jump over to Twitter and hear from the people. And while I'm doing that, make sure we get your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. I want to know what you thought about the Stranraer game. Now, there's been 1,993 votes. Thank you so much for getting involved. 2% votes for Ulla. 3% votes for Andy Halliday. 14% votes for Stephen Davis. But the far and away winner, and I'm so proud to say this, with 81% of the people's vote is a Patterson Man of the match. Now though it is time to hear from the people and the first one comes in from DK Neil and he writes in Young Patterson for me. Now that's how to show the gaffer what you can do. Perfect from the young man. Thomas Lee writes in Patterson played well. I couldn't tell it was his senior debut. Happy we're in the next round. Excited to see who we get. I love, honestly I love to see so much positivity and so much happiness. Shout out to Thomas Lee. That is what we like to see. Blue Sea of Ibrox writes in, we were not our best tonight, they defended for their lives, we just could not get the final ball, but I'll take a 2-0, my man of the match is Patterson, the wee man played a good game, put good crosses in, and was getting stuck in, well done to him, and on we go to the next round, yeah I like that, a couple of other challenges, because you know I was throwing about the 60th minute of the game, a wee bit of a kick, and I like the fact that he responded by getting stuck in himself, that's the making a yeah, very, very talented Rangers player. Peter Ramsey racing Patterson, easily the best player on the park, Rangers need to get another striker in, Jordan Jones was very disappointing, I've got to agree with you Peter, I just looked at him all night and he just couldn't beat anyone, honestly not even at the Stranma level, very very disappointing for JJ, I'm sure he'll bounce back though, Jordan writes in me for watching all that, <laughs> fair play son, fair play, Rab Ross writes in, was excited to see some young players given a chance to impress, by the end I was just happy to hear the final whistle, Jude writes in, worst game I've ever been to in my life, uh, Ewan underscore True Blue writes in me for sitting freezing for 90 minutes watching that nonsense. Come on! Come on, lads! Logan writes in, Aribo class once again, but has to be Patterson this time. Hope he plays in the St Mirren game. And the last one we'll read out in tonight's video actually comes from Andrew Bluebells, and he writes in, Poor match overall. Boy Patterson was head and shoulders above the rest tonight. Future's bright for this young kid. Hopefully, the captain takes him under his wing. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You've heard from the Beeble. You've heard from myself. If you haven't done so already, you know what to do by now. And as always, I've been CJ92. Thank you so much for watching, and bye.